Hello and welcome to this lesson about writing linear functions part one. The learning target for this video is writing linear functions in slope intercept form. There's a lot that can be uh, going to writing linear functions and so I like to break it up over several different parts. Uh, this part will be covering some of the basics. So first of all let's talk about not only goal but the bigger picture. So usually at this point in an algebra class you've spent many many uh, many much time uh, being given, hey, x plus one, or y equals x plus one, y equals negative three, x minus five, y equals two fifths, x plus four. Now go over here and graph that. So what we're doing now is we're gonna go in the exact opposite order. We want to write the equation. And so this is our goal. And you could be asked to do this in multiple forms, just like you were probably expected to graph in multiple forms. Maybe you had to graph in standard form or in point slope form. So you might need to be able to write equations in different forms. But usually the goal is to write an equation in slope, slope, intercept form. Slope intercept form is sort of, it's sort of, um, it's not off brand, it is name brand stuff. And so slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So what we need to do is find a few things. We need to find the y intercept and we need to find the m. If we can do that, we can easily plug those numbers in. And what's useful, to, or so just a couple of reminders, number b is the y-intercept, and that's where it crosses the y-axis. You have m, which is the slope, and something that a lot of people tend to forget is that x and y are values on the graph. Those are variables. We can plug numbers into in there if we need to. And so what we're gonna do in the rest of this video is simply look at how do we do this from graphs and how do we handle maybe the more simple cases of doing this by the numbers. And so let's look at some graph examples. So what we're trying to do is write something in y equals mx plus b. We need m, we need b. So with the graph, it's great because it's just, you're, you're looking at something. You're looking at something and you're describing it. Well, where is the y-intercept? B equals 4. Now, use your fingers and count to find the slope. Looks like we're going up 1 over 5. And so that means M equals 1 fifth. And so here's where we're starting to you know, combine a lot of these different skills, and we're just kind of flipping them around. Instead of, you know, given the equation and graphing it, you're now given the graph and you have to write the equation. Well, once we have b and m, bring it all together. y equals one fifth x plus four. And that's it. Let's go through some more examples. Now this one, same idea, y equals mx plus b. Here. It looks like our B is at six, and then our M is gonna be negative. And this is why I love to stress the idea of a negative slope goes this general direction. So right off the bat, I'll put a negative sign right there. Now, I'm gonna work on counting. We're going down three over one. So my slope is negative three. So, the overall equation is y equals negative 3x plus 6. Easy enough, right? Now, let's talk about some mistakes that maybe some people might make. So, let's just say, all right, people, someone finds the y-intercept. They get that right. But then they go down here and they're like, hey, here's a point. Well, the concept still works the same. How far did you go down? Well, we went down six spots and you went over two spots to the right. So the slope would be equal to six over two. Now the catch is you need to reduce the fraction. If it can be reduced, you must reduce it. So even if you picked another point just because you saw it first, it was convenient, you still have to reduce it, and it should be negative because it's going in the negative direction, and then you'll still get to the negative three x. 
Now, some people, like, they'll just leave it like that, and that's technically not uh, how it should be. All right, a couple more. So, again, y equals mx plus b. And here, the trick is b equals 0. It helps to identify that. Just be like, hey, b is equal to 0. It is what it is. Now, we have to find the slope. So, let's see how far we're going up or over. And sometimes with these, it can be tricky. You have to find the point where it passes perfectly. So it's going down, what is that? 8 over 3. Notice the direction of the line, so negative, and then 8 over 3. So y equals negative 8 thirds x. And there we go. One final example of the graph. This right here. It's a trick case. Uh, again, it always helps just to write y equals mx plus b, and then, you know, m equals b equals, and try to take it from there. Here, we have b equals 2. And then m, hmm, what is our slope? Well, remember, slope is that ratio of rise over run. It's not rising. So it has a slope of 0. So we'll put 0 there. And if you want to, you can write y equals 0x plus 2. But then you realize 0 times anything is just 0, so that goes away. And y equals 2. And that's how we write the equation of a straight line. Or horizontal line, at least. Next, let's talk about some number examples. So sometimes you might be lucky enough, and usually at the beginning of like a textbook in the homework section, they'll do something like, all right, well, here's your first problem. M equals two-thirds. B equals negative seven. Write the equation. Y equals two-thirds X minus seven. Done. Now, that's too easy because you're just plugging numbers in. Uh, and in a graph, like you can see that. You can do that very easily. But with numbers, it's going to get more complicated. And so what it might look more, or more seriously, what it's going to look like is something like this m is equal to 4, and there's a point on the line, 2 comma 9. What's the equation? And so you need to find that. Well, we can use it to help us find it. So we have a value for m. We can plug that in right there. And then we have more information. We have an x and a y. So this 2 can go in for x, this 9 can go in for y. That's how this works. You use that information. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 variables, and we're given 1, 2, 3 numbers. We're going to swap out three of those variables with numbers. 9 equals 4 times 2 plus b. We solve for b, so 9 equals 8 plus b, and then b equals 1. We now have b and m, and we can bring it all together. y equals 4x plus 1. For good measure, I'll do one more example. So again, let's say we have a point, m equal, or sorry, slope, negative one third, and we have the point 12, 5. What is the equation for the line that satisfies this information? Well, we need to do this in y equals mx plus b. We have four unknowns, but we're given three bits of information. So use those three pieces of information. 5 goes in for y is equal to negative one-third, because that goes in for m, times 12 goes in for x plus b. Now you got to be careful because again, like y and x are written in a different order than y and x are written in a different order than they're presented in the point. It's very tempting to put in 12 over here and 5 over there, but don't do that. That's not going to help you solve the problem. That's only going to cause problems. Okay, so now we get 5 equals negative 4 plus b. Add 4 to both sides. b equals 9. We have m, we have b, we bring it all together. y equals negative one-third x plus nine. And there we go. So, good luck with your homework or practice, and let me know if you have any questions.